fungi and fluoride. Being such an excellent fungicide, it is not surprising that borax is being successfully used to treat candida. There is much interesting information on an earth clinic forum called Borax Cures. With low to medium weight people use 1 8th teaspoon of borax powder, and with heavier weight 1 quarter teaspoon per liter of water. One drinks the water spaced out during the day, and does this for 4 or 5 days a week as long as required. Many contributors wrote that it cured or greatly helped them. So for instance this post. Quote. I also have psoriasis, so maybe the soreness in my joints is the psoriatic arthritis creeping in. I thought, after reading about borax here on this forum, I would give it a try. OMG. In one day, the soreness in my knees has vanished, also, my psoriasis seems a lot better after two days drinking one quarter teaspoon borax in one liter of water per day. Unquote. Another one about toe fungus. Quote. He wet his feet and then took a handful of borax and rubbed it all over his feet. He said it stopped itching immediately. He was stunned. A few weeks later I asked him how his athlete's foot was, and he said, Oh wow. It hasn't come back. That stuff totally cured it. Unquote. Other enthusiastic posts were about vaginal thrush. Borax appeared to be more effective than other remedies. Commonly, one large gelatine capsule filled with borax or boric acid was inserted at bedtime for several nights or up to two weeks. Alternatively the powder can be mixed with cool solidified coconut oil as a bliss or suppository. A recent scientific study confirms these positive observations with vaginal thrush. Boric acid at the dose of a filled capsule worked even in cases of drug-resistant candida and against all the tested pathogenic bacteria. Because of the greater dilution, a douche may not be strong enough for bacteria and drug-resistant candida, but it should work for normal candida. Borax, due to its alkalinity, was more effective than boric acid. In normal healthy conditions, candida exists as harmless oval yeast cells. When challenged, chains of elongated cells called pseudohyphae develop, and finally strongly invasive long, narrow and tube-like filaments called hyphae. These damage the intestinal wall, and cause inflammation and leaky gut syndrome. Pseudohyphae and hyphae can be seen in the blood of individuals with cancer and autoimmune diseases. Candida can also form tough layers of biofilm. This same study shows that boric acid, slash, borax inhibits the formation of biofilms and also the transformation of harmless yeast cells into invasive hyphal form. In other articles, I have shown that this process, commonly initiated by antibiotics, is a basic cause of most of our modern diseases, and this makes borax and boric acid primary health remedies. But this article shows that there are many more reasons to give them a top rating. A scientific review in 2011 concluded, quote, Boric acid is a safe, alternative, economic option for women with recurrent and chronic symptoms of vaginitis when conventional treatment fails. Unquote. But as it is so much better than drugs why not use it as a first option, or use the even more effective borax? Another study from Turkey shows the protective effect of boric acid on food contaminated with mycotoxins, especially fungal aflatoxins. Among these, aflatoxin B1 causes extensive DNA damage, and is the most potent carcinogen ever tested, especially affecting liver and lungs, also causing birth defects, immunotoxicity and even death in farm animals and humans. Boric acid treatment was protective and led to increased resistance of DNA to oxidative damage induced by aflatoxin B1. The strong antifungal action of boric acid is, of course, the reason why it has traditionally been used as a food preservative. I received numerous appreciative communications ranging from cancelling surgery for hip replacement to removing brain fog, and curing autoimmune diseases. One woman wrote in a recent Nexus magazine, of curing her lupus and serious kidney disease in four months with half a teaspoon of daily borax powder. Borax, similar to the, 
equally endangered Lugol's iodine solution, can also be used to remove accumulated fluoride and heavy metals from the body. Fluoride not only causes bones to deteriorate, but also the pineal gland to calcify and the thyroid to become underactive. Borax reacts with fluoride ions to form boron fluorides which are then excreted in the urine. In a Chinese study, borax was used to treat 31 patients with skeletal fluorosis. The amount was gradually increased from 300 to 1100 mg per day during a three-month period, with one week off each month. The treatment was effective with 50 to 80 percent improvement. One forum contributor suffered with fibromyalgia, rosacea, chronic fatigue and TMJ for over 10 years, which she believed was caused by fluoride. She used 1 8 teaspoon of borax and 1 8 teaspoon of sea salt in a liter of dechlorinated water, and drank this for 5 days each week. Within 2 weeks her face cleared, the redness faded, body temperature normalized, energy level increased, and she steadily lost excess weight. The only side effect was an initial aggravation of her osacea symptoms. Another post. Quote. Seven years ago, thyroid cancer, the next year adrenal fatigue, then early menopause, the following year uterine prolapse followed by hysterectomy, the following year fibromyalgia and neuropathy. Early childhood was fluorinated water along with fluoride tablets. Fall of 2008, I was looking at total disability. I could barely walk and couldn't sleep because of the pain and was throwing up daily from the pain in my back. After reading about fluoride, I came to understand where all of my problems originated, I began the borax detox of 1 8 teaspoon in a liter of water and within three days my symptoms were almost gone. Unquote.